And right now on News 4 at 6, new details emerge after a woman's body is found in Lake Erie. Tonight we're hearing from the couple who made this unsettling discovery. Plus, help is on the way for flood, flood victims across western New York. Why the governor says it's time for Uncle Sam to step up. And we're live in West Seneca for the Queen of Heaven lawn uh, fate. And, but also, we're taking a look at the rain chances getting into the weekend. Lots of events going on. More coming up next here at News 4 at 6. We circled a couple times, and my husband says, yeah, that's, that's a person in the water. For the first time, we're hearing from the man and woman who spotted a Pennsylvania woman's body floating in Lake Erie. Good evening, everyone. That grim discovery was made Tuesday. Pennsylvania State Police say Karen LeClaire was shot in the head, her ankles bound with an anchor attached to her body. Well, tonight, the couple who spotted her body are talking to News 4 about what they saw. News 4's Dave Graber met with the couple earlier today. Dave? Rachel and Scott Ball of Blaisdell headed out to fish with members of their family on Tuesday, just like they've done for years. It was a bright summer morning with calm waters, perfect for catching walleye and lake trout. But their trip took a grim turn when they saw something floating in the water. We circled a couple times, and my husband says, "Yeah, that's that's a person in the water." It it was crazy. It was like not. It was like it wasn't even real. Right away, we started looking at missing person reports, and you know, came upon a description of somebody that was met the description of you know Miss Leclaire. Rachel and Scott asked us not to show their faces because they said there were children aboard their boat. And they said they've been through enough. Karen LeClaire was reported missing June 11th by her husband, Christopher. The man told authorities his wife fell overboard when the couple went out on the lake last month. But doc surveillance video showed Christopher and his wife left together, and he returned alone. Investigators spent part of the day yesterday afternoon searching LeClaire's boat. They say they found both netting and other rope that matched what was found on the body of Karen LeClaire. It looked like something tied around her chest area because you could tell that something was tight around it and we could see down into the water a little bit it looked like something was under or weighing her down. The second rope was secured around the victim's chest which had a boat anchor attached to it. State police say Karen LeClaire was shot in the head before being dumped into the lake and her family had been desperately looking for her since early last month. At least her family has closure now they know what happened. I mean now they have the evidence they need to keep him in jail. I feel, I feel bad if bad things happen and it stinks for the family and it, it stinks that it's on a holiday. They'll, they'll, I feel like they'll just never celebrate the 4th of July the same way again. In addition to charging Christopher LeClaire with murder yesterday, Pennsylvania State Police arrested and charged Christopher's father, Ernest, with tampering with evidence. State Police said that he admitted to hiding the 38 caliber gun allegedly used to shoot Karen LeClaire in the head. Reporting live in the studio, Dave Graber, News 4 at 6. If the water comes to this height again, let's make sure it doesn't do this amount of damage again. Any New Yorker. Governor Cuomo says more needs to be done to prevent future flooding tragedies. The governor with local and state leaders spoke in Wilson this afternoon to talk about what the next steps are following the severe flooding in that area. The governor assured the homeowners and businesses that help is on the way to get them back on their feet. This includes a $55 million aid package passed by state lawmakers last week. The governor says the state is now seeking federal aid from FEMA. In a situation like this, where you reach a threshold amount in damage, which I believe we're going to meet, the federal government has a program to come back and reimburse, and we're going to pursue that aggressively. The governor is also calling on President Trump to help. He wants the president to appoint new members to the International Joint Commission, which studies the Great Lakes. He also wants the president to make the South Shore a lake disaster area. And we turn to the weather now with a live look over beautiful downtown Buffalo on this summer evening. A great night to get out and enjoy the summer weather. And what better way to enjoy it than a night at the Queen of Heaven Carnival. That's where our chief meteorologist Todd Santos joins us from West Seneca with the first look at the forecast. Todd? 
and I'm out here with about 340 cars that wouldn't dare be seen uh, on a rainy day. So I think we're doing good for tonight, especially here. Uh, this whole thing kicks off with a cruise night, and it's really larger than I can even explain uh, with just the size of this whole thing without getting uh, fully aerial shots for you. So it's worth coming down here this evening. Still a nice night, warm, kind of humid out here, temperature around 83 degrees. Looking at uh, tonight and tomorrow, we are going to track showers for a few areas. So I want to take you into the radar quick, our satellite radar, so you can see some of the thin cloud cover that's overspread much of western New York. But if you look close down towards, uh, say, Kane, PA, that's where we're a little bit closer to a few showers that have tried to fire up during the heat of the afternoon. Even one there right along the 86 just outside of Salamanca. Not out of the question for some of these to, like yesterday, move very slowly and drop some localized heavy rainfall amounts. Lightning potential still exists as these get a little bit taller. Thing is, the window is pretty narrow. It's basically between now and about 10 o'clock at night, possibly 11, and then it fades. Window closes, and that's really the only chance. So you don't see very much showing up there on radar. I don't think we'll see anything this far north, uh, say, from uh, Central Erie County northward, you're not going to find anything overnight tonight. Very spotty coverage for what does fire up, mainly across the eastern southern tier. Temperatures on the very warm side of things. I wanted to take you quick uh, into the model for tonight into tomorrow morning as we will again only cool down to about the mid and upper 60s for a lot of areas. I do think Buffalo will have a chance into the early morning of actually getting back to about 69 degrees, and then we very quickly are back into the 70s. Tomorrow, though, into the afternoon, we'll tap into a much better chance for showers and thunderstorms, and we'll take a closer look at that piece coming up. So at least for tonight, Expect quiet conditions, but the humidity hangs around and we'll only see that limited rain chance well to the south. Tomorrow's chance is a bit more potent, so we'll take a close look at that in just a little bit. Send it back to you from West Seneca. Don, Jackie. Thank you, Todd. Ride sharing services have now been in western New York for exactly a week. Now, there's been a few bumps along the road, and one of those bumps involves the NFTA. That's an extra charge for ride share passengers at the airport. News Force Al Vauders is getting answers today about this charge. Al? Well, Jackie and Don of Erie County officials called out the NFTA when it reached agreements with Uber and Lyft on fees the ride-sharing services would pay to use the airports in Buffalo and Niagara Falls. County lawmakers wanted to question NFTA officials directly, and they came with answers at a hearing this afternoon. The legislature's majority leader, Joseph Lurigo, was the most outspoken in his criticism of the fees, and Lurigo chaired today's hearing. Larigo accused the Transportation Authority of blindsiding Western New Yorkers with the fees. Uber will pay the NFTA a flat $180,000 in the first year, and Lyft pays $3 for each pickup and drop-off at the airport. The fees to be evaluated after one year are to compensate the NFTA for losses in parking fees and other income ride-sharing is projected to cause. But lawmakers on both sides of the aisle supported user fees rather than putting costs on the backs of taxpayers. All of the comments that I've received have been positive. People are happy, they're glad, they're embracing the concept, um, and they've not mentioned whether it's $3, $3.50. And I think it's good that this agreement is a, is a one-year agreement, and I, I, I think your strategy of evaluating it and then, uh, then, then tweaking it, I, I suppose, makes a lot of sense to me personally. Even with the new ride sharing fees, NFTA officials expect to take a net loss over the next year and pointed out revenue from the two airports helped to cover the cost of operating Metro bus service. Elwater's News 4 at 6. You put in your time and it's disgusting to see the company just, the corporate greed. Union members at the DuPont plant in Tonawanda say they will strike without a new contract. They're holding an informational picket outside the plant today and tomorrow. Their contract expires in nine days. They're worried the company could bring in outside contractors, and they oppose a two-tier wage system the company proposed. The company has not answered our call for comment on these negotiations. Well, next up, special training. We're taking you up and upside down as Buffalo firefighters master rope rescues. Hear why they say it's a skill set that they need.